Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. Today I'm going to be bringing you the second last installment of my How to Get Started Homeschooling series. I'm going to be talking to you today about choosing your schedule. Schedules can come in two different forms in your homeschool routine. It can be your daily homeschool routine, meaning what time of the day you decide to do things, and it can also mean what part of the calendar year you choose to homeschool. So I'm going to start out with your daily homeschool routine. Now, I think we all know that most schools tend to follow an 8 to 3 schedule or something similar to that. That does not mean that that's when you need to homeschool. In fact, it shouldn't even take that long for you to homeschool, but that's another video altogether. But what I am going to tell you today is just because school does their thing from 8 to 3 doesn't mean that you have to. If that works for you, great, but there are so many other options that you can choose. If your kids are early risers and you really like to go about doing things right away, then the early morning school is great for you. There are a lot of people I know though who really are kind of groggy in the morning and aren't at their best. If that's you, and that's how I am, um, you can actually start your day a little bit later. Now my kids are early risers, which means that I have to be an early riser, but I don't like to be an early riser, so I'm not going to start my school day early. We usually start our school day around 10 a.m. because that gives us time to transition into our day. You know, we can wake up in the morning and the kids can play a little bit, maybe watch some TV, we eat breakfast, straighten up a little bit before we start, and then they might play a little bit longer and then we start doing our school at 10 o'clock. And this really works for us because it's not too late to start, but it's not so early that we just don't feel like doing anything or even thinking at that time. Now on the other hand, my teenagers are night owls. They like to do everything late at night, and in fact, most of their homeschooling gets done while I'm asleep because they, they work independently because they're at that age now. I do set a time um, aside every day that I can help them with things that they do need help. It's usually with math. Um, but the rest of their work is often done at nighttime, and as long as they're getting it done, I have no problem with what time they're doing it at. So you want to try to keep that in mind as you're setting up your homeschool routine. You want to do it at a time that works for all of you. You can choose to homeschool late in the day if you want to. You can choose to homeschool throughout the day. You know, no one even says that you have to homeschool all in one shot. It's okay if you break things up and just homeschool a little bit here and there through the day. Whatever works for you, whatever you're comfortable with, that's what you need to do. Now, I want to just tell you to just be a little bit careful about following the uh, the school type schedules of maybe you might you might see schedules, you know, math from 9:15 to 10, language arts from 10 to 10:45, social studies from 10:45 to 11:15 and you just I know there are people who homeschool and I know that it works for them. But I'm going to tell you that you really have to be careful with those um, because sometimes your child might be taking a little bit longer on an assignment. For example, if they're working on something in language arts and if they're really into it, say if they're writing um, a creative writing story and then you tell them, oh, time to put your stuff away, it's time to do math. But mom, I was really liking writing this story. No, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's 1030. It's time for math. You shouldn't do that. So what you need to think of is if you want to have target times to start your homeschool day and end your homeschool day, that's really the best thing that you want to do. And as you can tell, the traffic outside of my house today is nuts. <sighs> anyway, um, so like I said, you want to have a good time to start your homeschool day and then maybe a goal for what time you want to end it. But I really would kind of stay away from having certain times to start each and every subject. It's okay, you know, if, you're, if your child only takes 15 minutes to do their language arts, by all means, move on and go right on and do their math. There's no reason that you have to say, oh, but we're not supposed to start math until 1030, so here, do these worksheets in the meantime. No, it's, it's okay. Let them just keep going. You might want to think of doing things in blocks of time. Maybe there are certain things that you want to do each day, but you don't necessarily have to write up a specific timeline for it. For example, I told you that we start our homeschool day at 10 o'clock in the morning. And what we usually do is we'll start out, we do everybody sits for the devotional together. And then I will read aloud to the littles. The littles do their table time. And then I read aloud to the middles. 
and they do their table time and then we'll move on to our unit study lessons. And um, we don't always get done with everything at the same time and that's okay. You know, I don't have a certain time that things have to start and finish in our homeschool. Sometimes we might finish everything by lunchtime. And other times we might be we might be still going after lunchtime. We might have to pick up again and maybe maybe keep going until three or four in the afternoon. And I don't want to scare you when I say that because remember I start at ten and our lunchtime. Now I do set a specific lunchtime because my kids enjoy knowing what time they're going to get to eat and have their break. So we do have lunch from 12 to 2. So that's two hours in there. So if you were thinking that there are days that we're homeschooling for six hours, uh, -uh four hours tops, usually about two hours. Well, that might be a little more than two hours lately, but it's usually between two to four hours. And what we do on our lunch break is the reason that it's two hours is because I usually am, you know, cooking their lunch and they eat and then they play sometimes inside, sometimes outside. And then at one o'clock, we will start doing our chores. My husband usually gets home from work around 1.50 so we like to have the house cleaned up because it gets really messy while we're homeschooling and I don't want him to walk into that. <laughs> so we do do our chores at one o'clock to have the house ready for the time that he gets home. He comes home then around 1.50, just a few minutes, you know, to just settle down. Maybe I'll, you know, get him some coffee or whatever. And then we will start back up again at two o'clock. But we don't have specific th times to do things because you have to realize that not everything is gonna take the same time every day. Sometimes, you know, certain certain activities are gonna take longer than others and you really don't wanna limit yourself by telling yourself, oh, well, this can only take this long, this is the only amount of time that I have allotted for this. You know, you just, you just don't wanna do that because it can really inhibit your children from being able to actually get into anything because it's almost as bad as a school bell. You know, when you're at school, at least I know that I always found it hard to actually get into anything that I was doing in school because I knew that even if I was enjoying what I was doing, which wasn't often, but even if I was enjoying what I was doing, I knew that that school bell was gonna ring soon and I was gonna have to drop everything whether I liked it or not and move on to another subject. And you just don't wanna do that in your homeschool. Give your kids the time that they need to finish what they want. And you know what, if, if it ends up being late in the day, you don't have to finish everything. You have that flexibility that you can, you can tweak things a little bit because as the facilitator, that's all up to you and you don't need to worry about making sure that you finish every single thing because life happens and sometimes things take longer. So just keep that in mind. Um, you don't, you're not restricted to the eight to three homeschool day, not at all. Now moving on to the homeschool year, same way, you know, we're used to the, the school year, the school calendar usually goes, usually from around August or September until May or June. And a lot of times we think that that's how we have to homeschool too. And I did that when I first started homeschooling, I didn't realize that there was any other way that I could homeschool. I just thought, Oh, well, you know, the kids are in school now, so I, I have to homeschool now. I didn't know that there were other options. And for me, what I found when I was going with the school year, and this is, this is not true for everybody, but for us, I found that homeschooling for really long stretches without having substantial breaks, not substantial, I just mean more than two days, you know, on the weekends, but homeschooling for long stretches tended to drive me towards burnout. And then when we got to summer vacation, that was three months long and that was way too long. It, it did not allow for enough structure that we needed and it caused a lot of fighting and just a lot of chaos that I didn't enjoy. So when I found out about the six weeks on, one week off year round homeschool schedule, I thought that was awesome. And that's actually what we've been doing for the past several years. We will start usually the second week of July. We homeschool for six weeks on, and then we take a one week break. And we do that throughout the year. Six weeks on, one week break. Six weeks on, one week break. And we, we do take a six week break from between Thanksgiving until New Year's. And then we take another six week break, usually from the last um, week in May or the beginning of June until the second week of July when we start our new school year. So that is another option for you. And what I like about it is that I know that 
after those six weeks, I know that I have a break coming and the kids know that they have a break coming and it's just short enough that they, that they don't start fighting and getting all crazy, which it still happens sometimes, but not as often. And I really like that. And as for the six week breaks at Christmas and over the summer, you know, the kids really do enjoy having that time off. As the mom, I've tried to talk them into having shorter breaks just because I've, I've noticed that I think the six weeks for us are, are also a little bit too long because since I have 10 kids in my house, we need that structure that comes with school. And so I was trying to talk to them maybe about doing three or four week breaks, but they, they won't hear of it. So maybe someday, but as of right now, six weeks are okay for us. But the six weeks on one week off schedule really is it's, it's good for us and that you might want to consider that as an option. There are also people who do three, three or four weeks on and then one week off and they don't take any longer breaks like, like we take the, the longer breaks. They don't take longer breaks. It's just three to four weeks on, one week off all year long. And actually I did bring that up to my kids, but again, they really enjoy having their, their six week breaks twice a year. So that right there, three to four weeks on, one week off is another option for you. And I have also heard of people who actually start their school year in January and they homeschool through December. For us, where I live, it would be hard for, for me to do that because our school district, well, not just our school district, but in our whole state, you can't really file for the new school year, new homeschool year until July 1st. So starting in January wouldn't really work for us because it would almost be like they hadn't recognized that part that whole six months there when you had started because you can't actually file until July. So it wouldn't work for us, but I know that there are a lot of either low or no regulation states. And if so, if you are in one of those states, and if that appeals to you, homeschooling from January to December, then by all means, that is another option for you. What you really want to keep in mind is that homeschooling means freedom. So you want to take advantage of that and Try not to fall into the rut of always trying to do things like school does. You know, I talked last week about how you don't have to use textbooks just because school uses them. And I think that if we look at the state of our schools in the country right now, it's school, they're, they're not really something that you want to follow anyway. Um, so just as with the textbooks, just because schools go from certain time to a certain time every, every day, or they start at this time of the year and end at this time of the year, it does not mean that you have to do it. You are in charge of your homeschool. Take advantage of that flexibility. You know, your kids are learning in freedom and you need to also really enjoy the freedom that comes with making things work for your family. Take a look at your family and think, what do I think will work with work for us? And you know what, if you try something and it doesn't work, that's fine. You change it. You know, that's what I did. I started out September to um, June and it didn't work for us. So we moved on to six weeks on one week off. We found out that this actually does work rather well for us. If someday I would find out that it didn't, we'd move on again. We have that option. So really, I want you to take advantage of that and remember that you're in charge of your homeschool and you know your family better than anybody. So next week, I'm going to bring to you the last installment of this series. I'm going to bring some final tips to you on how to homeschool simply and effectively, and then you're off. So you have a great week.